In this video I will be unboxing and setting up the Creality 3D Ender 3 printer. This is a video I'm really excited about because I've been waiting to do this for a while. In fact I've had it sitting here for a couple weeks so let's get started. We have our instruction manual. A little bit of filament and some miscellaneous parts. Oh. Oh, this has some tiny paper clips. That's so cute. Spatula. It's like wood. I think that's just packaging. Well, that's a very lightweight power supply compared to my other one. So that is it. Let's get to assembling. Conveniently labeled the bags with the size of the screws in them. They don't have the screw labeled with a size, nor do they have it in the parts list. I have a feeling it's the 5x25, but it might be this one as well. No, I think it is the 4, because those are 4mm holes. Ah. Yes. The 4x20s. They're only used in one spot, or they're not used in any spots, but it says there's only two, but it has three actually. Clippers. Flush cutters, really.
rates on this printer is to put a little bit of a spacer in here, so I may be doing that. The reason I'm going to do that is because the kind of filament I have is in some bigger rolls. And I want to give it the maximum amount of space. I will be right back. I'm gonna clean this up. Okay, I'm back. I cleaned that up. Um, I am going to continue what I was doing. Hmm. I do that. Okay, I'm back. I went to go start again and I was missing this piece and the only reason I was able to find it is I reviewed my footage that I had just taken and I saw a gun flying off the side of the desk. I have to see if I can get a bigger pipe or a longer pipe.
Okay, my last SD card ran out of room in my camera, so I went ahead and put a new one in. I've gone ahead and lowered this, loosened the screw here. It actually feels pretty good. I centered this plate here and put the clips on here so it should be able to slide back and forth here pretty easily. I attached, or I made sure all these were tight here and rerouted the cables a little bit and it looks pretty good. Now I know the wire ties are going to be for attaching these to places where they're going to fit better but I'm not sure where that is going to be yet, and that part of the instructions appears to be missing. We also have a few leftover screws, which is fine. This build actually was pretty quick, and definitely much easier than building one from scratch. This tube, I believe, was meant for protecting the threaded screw rod during the shipping, so not needed. comes with a little 8 gigabyte SD card. I think it might have some instructions on it. Came with this little card reader as well, so I'm going to go ahead and place that in my computer and see what it says. Famous last words, huh? So they have assembly instructions version 1, version 3, and then there's a quick start guide version 2.3. Now this one's kind of neat because it actually shows the board here and that's just the installation instructions then it had a oh it has Cura for Windows which doesn't help me the troubleshooting guide ah it even has like a test dog in G code so it's already set up for this printer so it looks like I can actually put this SD card right in the printer and it could print off of there now one of the first things I hear people talk about for this particular printer is to get a little cover, or print off a little cover on here so no little bits fall into the fan. So that will be one of the first prints I do. I'm going to do a benchy boat. Since my filament doesn't fit on there, we'll pull out this orange filament I have that does. I actually originally got this when I was planning on printing off the parts for the RepRap Iteration 3, Mark 3 or 2.5 I think I was going to try for, but now that I have this, I don't need to. So fits nicely on there, brush cutters are for cutting the filament off. Yeah, it did come with some, um, I'm not sure if this is PLA, but that would be my guess. And due to the poor print quality that I experienced with my original printer when I got it, I've been a little averse to using PLA, but I have a good feeling about this. Now I'm going to go ahead and try and level this next. And I'm going to probably just do that off camera because it's kind of boring and all I'm going to basically be doing is putting a little piece of paper underneath it to make sure it has about the same resistance on all four corners and then I will go ahead and try doing some test prints. Hi! So I had to do a few things on here. This is actually just starting the first print here so... You'll see how it ends up, but it's not looking great yet. I had to end up setting the Z-axis leveling and plug in the little plug. The, it, I should note that it does not come with a micro USB cable, or a mini USB cable. So I had to dig through my cords, and the first one I tried was one of those power only ones. So after trying to troubleshoot it for a while, I got it working with this cord. I'm using Cura to do this, and it's just not sticking. Um, maybe I need to 
have it a little closer to the print bed for the first one. Or maybe it's just not hot enough for the print bed. I think what I'm going to do now is use the spatula to scrape it off and start again. So I will be back again. Okay, I've gone ahead and adjusted it so that it's a little bit closer to the print bed. And now it's printing really well. So this will be its first print. I'm doing a Benchy boot which I guess is pretty traditional for a 3D printer. My other one actually has never printed off a Benchy boat. I started off with a 20 millimeter cube because that's how it was at the time. Yeah, the Benchy boat looks like it's coming out good. So I'm gonna print off the Benchy boat and then I'm gonna start printing off some parts to upgrade this. I'm gonna probably be heading to the hardware store here soon to, well, Actually, I'm going to head to the hardware store tomorrow, and I will get a little bit bigger pipe here, and a couple nuts that fit on it, and then I'll see if I can fit, like, some a little bit longer spools. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've tried printing two Benchy boats. The problem with this one, well, it actually didn't break on its own. I was kind of stress testing it, but the problem with this one is it didn't stick to the bed because I started off with the default cure setting of 80 degrees, which I think is too low. I set it to 100 degrees and then I tried it again and that came off with this print, but this one stuck to the bed well enough that the print had actually knocked this piece off because the layers are not sticking well enough together. So I think because of this particular 3D filament, I'm actually, I had tried printing it at 230 degrees. I'm gonna try bumping it up to 240 degrees, but it's getting a little late right now, so I'm going to continue tomorrow. So just wanted to give you an update. Okay, so I went ahead and I tried it at 100 degrees for the heater bed and 240 degrees for the filament, and now the layers are much better if I ended up successfully printing a Benchy. There was a little bit of warping on the bottom and the only thing I'd like to try is a little bit higher bed te temperature. I also suspect the more that I print it, the better it's going to stick because there will be more filament and stuff. It's pretty new and doesn't have a lot of stuff that stuck to it at this point. I didn't end up actually going to the hardware store to get a longer pipe. What I decided I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and try and find something on Thingiverse and print that off and then I will use that in order to extend it. That way I can just do it with what I have. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and print some more accessories. The only thing I noticed is on this benchy, if you look at the smokestack up here, you can kind of see it's not perfectly rounded, and that makes me wonder if there's some sort of a calibration issue. I guess the next thing to do would be to try and print off a calibration cube and compare that. Um, the measurements of the Benchy didn't quite match up to what it showed on their website, which I believe is like 3dbenchy.com. And so um, with the Creality 3D printer here, the Ender 3, um, there isn't any way of actually plugging in the numbers without taking it apart and re-uploading the firmware so, since it's open source now. So one way of getting around that is to plug in codes that will actually readjust it into the beginning of the print job. Uh, I believe there's some settings in Cura. And I'm gonna go ahead and try that and I feel, if I feel very comfortable with that and maybe I want to try switching software I might go ahead and try and open up the 3d printer and adjust the Settings in the firmware and re-upload that I think I'm gonna have to use like an Arduino or something or Actually, you know, what? I got this USB serial cable for going to the Hackaday Supercon because that is one of the items they suggested and I think it might actually work really well in reprogramming this printer. So my overall opinion of this printer is for the price it's a really excellent value. Um, I'm very happy with it. It does require a little bit of adjustment and if you're willing to put in a little extra time. I feel like it's a really good printer especially with the build volume that you get off of there. 
and I would definitely recommend it and I'm gonna go ahead and play with it some more. I think that's gonna wrap up what we have for today. Thank you for watching and remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.